Hey everyone, it's Gina from orchidandopal.com. I am back today to share with you a little tutorial about how I made this pendant that I recently shared in the latest finished jewelry update. This pendant is a slab of howlite stone that came in a recent bargain bead box subscription along with some of these metallic components. And I wanted to share with you how I put this together with some aluminum wire from BB Craft. I'm gonna leave the links for everything that I'm using today right down below the video. I don't know that I'll have a specific link to this exact shape of stone or components, but perhaps you can find something similar to it if you don't already have your hands on the contents of the subscription, or maybe it'll give you an idea of how you can put something else together from your own stash in a similar manner. Here's a closer look at this pendant. You can see that I wire wrapped this directly to the metallic component that you see on the back, which offered a, another layer of interesting detail. And that component wrapped directly onto the back of the pendant to attach to this necklace. I am by no means a wire expert, but I do have fun experimenting and playing around with different things. And this really wasn't that hard to do. So I hope it inspires you at least to give something like this a try one day maybe. And keep in mind, I'll be using the aluminum wire, which is a lot softer than the copper wire that is often used a lot in jewelry making. BB Craft does offer a lot of similar metallic components, pendants, of course, your tools, and all sorts of wire. This aluminum wire comes in different sizes and so many different colors. So have fun checking out what they have to offer. And if you would like to shop at BB Craft, I also have a coupon code that will save you $5 off your purchase of $40 or more. That code is OPAL5, and I will leave that down below the video as well as the links to everything and the link to BB Craft. They also offer free international shipping on all orders of $25 or more. Just allow a couple weeks for your items to get to you, depending on your location. To get started, we're going to snip off the loops of the larger metallic component on the bottom. So you'll want a pair of wire cutters, something you don't mind using on a hard material like that, because it will take a little bit of a toll on the blades. After we do that, we'll wrap that to our pendant using some of the wire. And in the meantime, you can gather up your materials and we will jump into this tutorial. All right, so the first thing we're gonna do is snip off all of these loops from the bottom of this component. And you might wanna put on some glasses for protection just in case those loops go flying. And I have my pair of wire cutters and just going from the side, I'm going to snip off those loops by squeezing from one side to another down there at the base. And just go on to the next one. I'm gonna work my way in. And it's as simple as that. Now we do have some rough areas down here at the bottom and you won't see the discoloration because we're going to add a little bit of wire to cover that surface, but you can take a file and file down some of those sharper areas and smooth out where you trimmed off your loops. And you can use a metal file or something specifically for jewelry. I happen to have a glass file, which I don't necessarily recommend for this, but hey, it worked and it's what I had available near me. You can just start to file down those rougher surfaces just a little bit. Again, we're gonna have some wire covering that spot. Next, I trimmed off a piece of wire. It's probably about 16 inches in length, and I started to squeeze that in half like you see there. And you'll also wanna get your pendant and just determine which side you'd like to be on the front and which side you would like on the back. The metal component that we just trimmed will be going on the back of the pendant. And I think I will make that the back. And then what we can do is just line up this piece so that the bottom of this component is sitting kind of like this, where those two areas come together, we want that to be sitting right in front of the hole. And you'll have a chance to move this around slightly as we go. 
but that's pretty much where that's gonna sit. And then in the meantime, you can take your piece of wire and have one side go around one side and the other go around the other side of that metal component and through the hole. And just hold that in place and put that wire through. And it's gonna be sitting kind of like that. You can see our loop of wire that's just beginning to hold this metallic component in place. And then I'm gonna flip this over and just make sure your wire is all the way through the hole. And you're gonna split that wire like this. One's gonna go off in this direction and the other one's gonna go off in this direction. You can just smooth that out right over the top and just hold that in place with your fingers. And with one side, I'm going to gently just bend it slightly and poke it through the top of the component and pull and just start to have it sit this way around the component and sort of turn that a little bit. We'll do the exact same thing with the other side, just poke it through that top area just everything you do with wire, just use a light hand touch because you can go back and smooth this out later and make it tighter. And you don't wanna kink your wire or scratch it if you can help it. And as you hold this, start to pull these tight. That's what you should have so far. Then with the wire on the right, poke that through the main hole of the pendant yet again and go off to the side of the metallic component that we have on the back. And it should be coming up like this with that first initial loop that will be sitting above it when this is held right side up. Flip that over so you can do the same thing with the other piece of wire. Just start to bend that back and go through the hole and off to the left of the metal component. Just start to pull that, press it in there. Just make sure you have it going in the right place when you turn this around and pull and then smooth it out. Next, take the piece of wire on the right and you see you have that little spot at the bottom where you can still go down there and also through the main hole of the pendant. So poke that through. and do the same thing with your other piece of wire on the left. And pull both of those pieces nice and tight. And now we're gonna do that similar thing again from the front, we're gonna take the wire on the right Go underneath the component off to the right hand side like that and pull that tight and poke that through the bottom area off to the right of the main hole of the pendant and have the other part of that wire sitting right next to that. Do the same thing on the left. Poke the wire through the side, pull, and bring that back over and poke that through the left-hand bottom side of the component on the back and pull nice and tight. We have something like this so far and then that's what the back looks like. And now take the piece of wire on the right, poke it back through over the top of that metal component, underneath the loop of wire that you made before, pulling tight so you have now two loops right there, and do the same thing with the other side, going over that metal component, through the hole of the pendant, and have that going right underneath that other loop, off to the side. And now we're gonna start wrapping these pieces of wire 
taking the one on the right, going underneath the side of the metal component on this side, pull that tight, and you're just gonna loop this around to secure this side of the wire about three times. So just loop it around and pull tight, smooth it out, wrap it around again, and pull tight. And we're going to smooth these out a little bit in just a moment once we get everything secure with this piece. Now do the same thing on the other side, taking your wire on the left, going underneath the metal component, and pull and then wrap this around the same number of times to match the other side. And that's what you should have so far. Now just start to push that wire coil up to the sides on each of those areas. And just go ahead and trim off the excess. We're gonna be using another piece of wire next. And now you can just take your fingers and start to smooth these wires together. You're gonna to have five on each side. I like to just smooth them over the top of either side of the stone so that they're sitting next to each other and then push them down a little bit. And then I like to push those areas down as well. And then sort of flatten out those two pieces back there. And bring those coils up. So there's a look at what we have so far. It should look something like this on the front and something like this on the back. Next, you can pull out your other metal component that'll sit right in the front of that hole and kind of cover up that area and add that final touch of detail. And also trim off a new piece of aluminum wire that's about 10 inches long and double that up and squeeze that together to make a rounded loop in the center, just like that. Then take your wire and sort of fork it through the top of the metal component, just like that, one side going through each of those areas at the top section. And then pull that loop down to the metal component. Then take these ends and feed them through the bottom area, the bottom most area of the hole in that pendant gently. And then start to pull them through. And that loop of wire is going to hold this metallic component in place. Then flip this over and you can see you have your two pieces of wire at the very bottom now, which is what you want and pull that as tight as you can. Also start to wrap these pieces of wire tightly around the bottom curve of the component on the left and the right. So you have something like this. And with your piece of wire on the right hand side, take that and feed the end of that underneath the metallic component on the side. Smooth it down at the bottom to follow the contour of the bottom of the component and pull nice and tight and do the same thing with the other side. So take the end and feed it through the side. Gently start to pull it and make sure that the wire starts to contour around the bottom of the component. And pull it down smooth these out. And we have this coil that's at the top of the side of our component and then we have our new wire right there and we are going to continue the coil from the bottom going up now. So I'm just bringing that wire around the side and I'm going to make several coils around this side to finish off this piece of wire.
So make three or four of those and just bring them together with that top coil. And I'll just push those together and do the same thing on the other side. At this point, you can trim the excess wire back here. And turn your piece over. And you can use your pliers and just gently start to pull those wires together so they look like they're one coil on each side. And just smooth those areas out over the top. And now your pendant is complete and you are welcome to add a little charm maybe down there at the bottom or just leave this as it is. There's a look at the back. And your piece is all ready to string onto your necklace. And that concludes this tutorial and showing you how to combine these two components together to make one pendant with a unique looking wire wrapped bail. I hope you enjoyed checking out this project. Once again, you can use the coupon code OPAL5 at BBCraft, which I will leave down below with the link to their shop and links to the specific type of wire I was using. And I will try to find some similar types of components as well, even though these came in the bargain bead box. But thank you so much for joining me. Feel free to leave a comment down below. Let me know if you've given this a try or if you plan to give it a try or anything else you'd like to say. Be sure to give the video a big thumbs up if you enjoyed it. Don't forget to subscribe while you're here and feel free to share the video with your other beading friends. I'll be back again real soon. Until next time though, I hope you have a fabulous rest of your day. And as always, happy beading. Mm -hmm.